Hey, welcome back to the studio. So we have these pieces of clear glass on these mushroom, these ceramic mushroom molds. And last time, they didn't turn out the way we anticipated. Nothing new. It happens all the time in the studio. Usually in my videos, you see the projects after all of this experimentation has taken place. You just get to see the finished pieces in their beautiful, glorious splendor. Well, now you're getting to experience what it's like for me all that goes into making these different projects and all the tests and all the time I spend firing things to get what I like. And hopefully this will save you some time, money, and material so you don't have to do that. Let's open this kiln. Oh boy. Still not what we wanted. So what happened is the first time we fired it, we measured the molds. Come on over here and take a look. We measured the mold and decided to cut six inch circles. Well, I believe these circles are too big. Look how it's hanging over the mold right here. You see that? And here, see how it's hanging over the mold? Oh, this is getting dangerous right there. We fired these to 1200 degrees and held it there for 10 minutes. And we ended up with kind of a loose taco. So I took the pieces, I refired them again to 1265, hoping that they would, you know, even out and I wouldn't have this shape this direction but I would end up with a nice florally looking piece. Well that didn't happen. So let's go ahead and take this piece out. Take it off the mold and woohoo check that out. Not great, not great. This is supposed to slip right off. If this gets really tight right here, remember ceramic cools slower than our glass. So this getting tight right there is potential for breakage. And look at this shape. That's ridiculous. I have no idea what to use this for and I'm not really happy with it. So what I'm going to do with this piece, first of all we need to get it off the mold so let's see if we can give it a little tap. Okay, give it a little more of a tap. Okay, this is fun. Uh, oh boy. Let's see, oh my gosh, this is really almost stuck. Right, well maybe I shouldn't be doing it against my kiln. Yeah, okay. Well, okay, a little too hot, I would say. Let's take it over here and see if we can get it off. Have to get a little more aggressive with it. Wow. All right, I'm getting a little more aggressive with it. I'm gonna take my, the rubber portion of my pliers, give it a little tap, see if I can get it off there. Oh gosh. Let's go this way. All right, at this point, the glass is garbage. So if it breaks, it's fine. What I really want to do is retain this mold and make sure that I don't break it. This sucker is really stuck. What are we gonna do? Oh gosh, I don't know. So, but this is exciting, right? You get to see this stuff. It happens to me all the time. You just don't usually see it in video. Well, today you get to see it. I'm gonna turn this upside down. Just a little bit of a tap. Oh wow, look, it came off, look. We saved the glass and we saved the mold. Awesome, now this thing. Um, I kind of feel like this might be the diet portion of ice cream bowl. So you give this to somebody who just needs a little teeny tiny taste and that's it because that's all you can fit in this little bowl is a teeniest tiniest little bit of ice cream. But that's not at all what we wanted. Now what we do have that's kind of cool is we have these, you know, these nice five uh, specific angles. That's cool. This shape, ridiculous. I don't know. Well, I mean, uh, oh, I don't know. It's getting sort of interesting. Maybe it's some sort of new type of flower. Maybe a ma um, morning glory of sorts. This could be pretty cool in a color, right? So maybe there will be an opportunity to use this shape and want it. Right now, no. Uh, so right now, this is going to go on this portion of my table right here. It's going to sit there, and that's my idea bank. I'm going to just let it sit there. And at some point, maybe some idea will come to me as to how to use that. Let's go back over to kill and take this other one out. Now, as you recall, the first time this one was fired, it was, it was in the kiln this direction, and we ended up with it kind of going that way. The second time I fired it, I turned it this direction. It really didn't help it. Um, oh, look, this one, this one does come off, so that's nice. Okay. Um, and this one had, remember this one was a, a shape. Let's bring this over here. I'm going to bring this with me. There we go. Um, this one, this first one right here was just a circle, a six inch circle. This one here, we made a shape that was kind of like a flower. And after I made this shape with four bumps, I realized that this mold has five 
indentation. So it's a five petal or five petal flower or a five um, segmented mushroom cap, whatever you want to do. Uh, so this one, the curvature seemed to um, influence the way that this slumped a little bit. So keep that in mind. Round will slump one way, something with a curvature will slump a little differently. All right, so curvature. It added something to the design and changed the way it slumped. Now look at the two of these and we compare them. You know, the round one is bigger where these indentations are. Oh, what happens if we nest them together? I don't know. That's kind of crazy. It's a pretty sound too, right? Um, I mean, they work, they sit like that. It's almost like, I don't know, lips of a fish or something. <laughs> you mount this on the wall, you make it look like, you remember those fish that used to sing? Well, this could be some little fish lips on the wall, like a big old grouper. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, see the idea bank. These are both going into the idea bank. No idea what to do with them yet, but something may come to me, or we could always make them dumpster frisbees, drop them in the trash can and listen to them break. That's fun too. Music to my ears. And see, isn't it, this is exactly why we use clear glass. Least expensive, easy to cut, do all your testing. And then when you add color or you add some design, then you're really gonna end up with something fabulous and you'll know exactly what to expect. So let's put these in the idea bank over here. Um, gonna move the holes out of the way. So I believe that both of these are a little too big. Probably a little bit too big by about this amount right here. See where there's indentation here where it hit the edge of the mold. So let's see how much that excess that is. It's about a quarter of an inch. So if we take, so these were six inch circles. If we take a quarter inch for each side off and make this a five and a half circle, it should fit better on the mold. So let's try that. So what we're gonna do today is I'm gonna cut a five and a half circle, inch circle. Then I made this new design with five segments to it. And this one so that it would match that, this, that these molds have kind of five indentations. So I made this little pattern. I'm gonna either could cut it out of a single piece or I could cut it out of multiple pieces. I'll probably just cut it out of a single piece. Then after I made this and you know, I kind of you know, saw these, I thought, well, maybe I would do a different design, something like this, where these longer pieces, where there's more weight, those should fall first and it should influence the way that the glass drapes and give me, hopefully give me a more graceful look than what we have here, which is not graceful at all. So I'm gonna cut out one of these. Uh, we're gonna cut out a, just a plain circle, or maybe we just do, we do these two and we compare those. So that's our next step. So I'm gonna use clear glass again cut these two shapes out and put them on the mold. Now, part of me says do a plain circle just to see what happens because a plain circle is super easy to cut and it is super easy to slump. So <clears throat> we're gonna do a plain circle, I think, and then one of the two of these. Um, I think I'm gonna try this one because this one looks a little more interesting to me. And then we'll compare. So let's head over here to the circle cutter. All right. Got my piece of glass here. So we're gonna make this piece a little bit smaller than it was before it was. It originally started as a six inch circle. Now we're gonna cut a five and a half inch circle. So I take my circle cutter, turn this little knob right here and adjust it so that it'll be a five and a half inch circle. Snug that down. Now I'm gonna put the glass, put this, the glass under here and I rotate this around to make sure it's not going to fall off the glass on any of the sides because that's not good for your cutter and it's not great for your glass. So I'm kind of lining that up. Now this, I want this and this in line with each other. So this should really be over here. So what I'm doing is I'm comparing it to the lines on the grid and I know this is um, straight in the grid because that's the only way it fits in. And then this direction, I want to make sure that they are, have, I have a nice right angle here because that improves the way that this cuts. I'm going to lift up on here, I'm going to go around, I'm going to bring this over. I want to use, be as frugal with this glass as possible. Whoops, I go this way a little bit because I'm hoping I can get that other shape out of this other half. All right, so I'll bring this over a little bit more. Okay, we're not going to fall off there. 
We're not going to fall off over here, and we're not going to fall off over here. Okay, perfect. So I'm going to hold on to here. Ooh, you had a beautiful sound. A good score. Should, you should hear it, but it should be nice and even and no grinding. Oh, did you hear that? That means we came right back to the circle. Awesome. I'm going to lift this and move it out of the way. Actually, I'm going to move it a little more out of the way, actually like that, to make sure you can see what I'm doing over here. So now I have this terrific score line. I'm going to take some my handheld cutter, go into the score line, and then gradually out. These are called, uh, you know, I don't know what these are called. I kind of lost my train of thought there. Um, I call these just kind of score lines. <laughs> But the idea is to do them very gradually, like acceleration lanes, not too steep. They should go gradually into that existing score line and not be um, too, you wanna make it such that the score line can very easily follow that line. So make it easy on the glass and the glass will make it easy on you. I'm gonna take my grossing pliers, go around and peel off this excess material. here because I'm going to be using that piece in a second. Oh, look at that. Coming right off there. All right, so I've got these little bumps. So going around with my grosers, getting it a little tighter, taking off all that excess material. I don't even think I'm going to grind this piece of glass because, uh, you know, it's such a test at this point that I don't really think that's going to be necessary. I just want to find out what temperature that I want to slump this at. So what we've learned so far is clear glass is the best thing to use because it's least expensive, consumable. You know, you can just go through it like crazy. And we learned that our circle was a little larger. Now we measured the mold originally with a soft tape measure, but we've concluded that that was a little too big. So it got a little bit smaller. And we've concluded that 1200 is too low and 1265 is too hot. So we have learned a lot of information just on firing this kiln three times with plain old clear glass. So this is terrific. Great information for you guys. All right, so I'm gonna put this one aside for a minute. I'm gonna bring my pattern over. I'm just gonna cut right here on this board. I'm hoping this fits on here. Oh, which it does, it fits beautifully. Now I'm gonna do what's called the English method. I'm gonna just cut right over the top of this pattern. And get as close to this shape as I can. Now this shape, is, let's measure it for you. It is about five and a half inches point to point. So it is the same size as this. I did make it a little smaller than my original piece. The original piece I just drew with a compass and <clears throat> faked it with a pair of scissors. This one, I actually um, pulled up my glass eye, you know, glass program for drawing designs. And I drew a five-sided piece of art and then I divided it and then I gave it some curvature. So I was going to put this on here because this mold is intended to make little mushroom caps, but I want to make little flowers. Now, after all this, I might end up making little mushroom caps too because I hope I have so much information from this that I want to make a whole bunch of things. All right, so I'm going to go right along this line. I rotate the pattern, make it easy for myself. So a good score has consistent pressure throughout. So if I'm going this way, I don't have good pressure or good strength this way in my arm. And a good score comes from your wrist, your elbow, and your shoulder, kind of your whole body. So a good score, make it convenient for yourself so that you can position the glass in such a way that you can make that score consistently. All right, glass likes to cut straight, and I am asking you to do some pretty tricky stuff here. Oop, I missed that last one. So, I might have to go in and add a few more score lines to ensure that it goes the way I want it to. See, I'm coming out, going back in, you get a little curvature. So let's start with this score line right here, and I'm just gonna use my running pliers and give a gentle squeeze and see what happens. Yay, that's what we wanted. This way, yay, all right. <laughs> okay, remember the first circle broke? Well, we're doing much better today. But I may better not say anything until I'm done. All right, let's try, oh, look, yay. It's going, working nicely. Okay, 
All right, one more to go. Let's see how this happens to work out. Yes. And just because we got all of them done, let's be a little safer. Score the other direction. And look, oh, it's kind of like, I don't know, it reminds me of like something that might be in the ocean. A sea star of sorts. I'm just gonna take the pointiness off of these ends. Yep, I'm not gonna grind this piece either. It doesn't look like it needs it. That's another great thing about working with clear glass is it cuts easily. So once I get all this experimentation done, I don't mind working with a more expensive glass that's a harder to cut because I know what I'm gonna get when I put it in the kiln, fire it, and it comes back out. So great thing about the clear glass, quick and easy to cut up, get in the kiln quickly and get your results and find out where you wanna go from there. So let's go over to the kiln and load these two pieces of glass. All right, here we go. Oh, we need our molds. Okay, so uh, we're gonna go ahead and put these back in. Now remember, this time our glass is about five and a half inches across. Oh, this is dirty from the dust from the mold. So I'm gonna take dry towel. You don't have to reprime the molds? Uh, no, not if they're, you're only going to 1265. Now, if they show signs of wear or chipping, then I would prime them. And actually one of these is showing a little bit of sign of chipping, but we're just gonna keep move, be moving forward because we're gonna take this below 1265. So this primer can go all the way up to $1,600, $1,600, <laughs> 1,600 degrees and still hold up. So by going to less than 1265, we're not even putting it to the test. So I'm cleaning this up. Now I'm going to handle it from the sides. But that was a terrific question. Thank you. I center that on there. I'll clean this one up. And I'm just using a dry towel. If I needed some moisture, I would just use water. All right, now put this on here. And we're going to line this up with the shape of the mold. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. And this one we're going to center. That looks pretty good. Now these still look bigger than the mold from the top. So this is pretty interesting. So we're going to fire this. Let's see, we did 1200, we did 1265. All right, so I think I'm dividing 12, what's between 1200 and 1265? Uh, I think we're going to go about 1235 for temperature on this, these pieces and see what happens. Hopefully the one with the shape, you know, gets a nice, graceful, uniform drape. Hopefully the other one, we don't get that taco again because we're going to go hotter. So we're going to double check that these look like they're centered. They look pretty good. Very carefully close this lid because if we don't close it carefully and they fall off, then we lose our test. Not going to work for us. So now I'm going to go ahead and program this to 1235. I'm going to fire that, hold it there for 10 minutes, and we'll see what kind of results we have in the next vlog. So I want to thank you guys so much for joining me, and hope you enjoyed you know, learning and, and experimenting with me here in the studio. I loved it, love it, and love sharing this information and this fun time together with you. I want you to check it out. I've got a new shirt. I've got some new shirt designs. My favorite age is now, and I love tie-dye, always have. Uh, I'm thrilled that it's, when it, I was sad when it went out of style, I'm thrilled it's back in style, and now everything's in style, so you can just wear whatever, whatever the heck you want. So, I want you to check out my new t-shirt designs on my website, and I want you to vote for your favorite. If you vote for your favorite, every, when you do vote, you're automatically registered to win a prize, the t-shirt that wins the competition. So go there, check it out, check out my t-shirts, vote for your favorite, and then you could potentially be wearing one of these cool shirts or one of my other cool shirts, um, because you get it for free, because you get it as a prize. So one winner per competition here, per giveaway, but that could be you. So go there and check it out. So thanks so much for joining me. Really enjoyed working with you today. Can't wait to share with you what's going to come out of this kiln next time we open it up. So happy fusing!